Next we have the sphenoid bone in the articulated skull. It's in this area. And I've placed a disarticulated sphenoid bone back here. The body of the sphenoid bone is this area. Let's try to imagine that the sphenoid bone looks like a bird. And the bird has feet, which are the tergoid processes. And the bird has two sets of wings, greater wings and lesser wings. Well, the part of the bird that the wings and the feet are attached to is the body, which again is this general area in here. The superior aspect of the body right here is the sala tersica of the sphenoid bone. That's where the pituitary gland sits. In the articulated skull, this is the sala tersica. These are lesser wings. And the greater wings wrap up this way. Interestingly, if we rotate the skull, look at a lateral view of the skull, this is the external surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Literally, this is the same structure as this. Things that I'm indicating now with the black wires are the optic foramen. The optic foramen are the passageways for the optic nerves. We can also see these passages by looking in the orbital fossa, which just means eyeball socket. The optic nerve is the sensory nerve that conducts impulses from the eye to the brain. Here I've indicated the optic foramen with the purple pipe cleaners and the disarticulated bone. Notice that the optic nerves would cross right over the cella tersica. That is the way the optic nerves cross. And the reason for that is to send signals from each eye to both sides of the brain. This is what gives you stereoscopic or three-dimensional vision. The openings in the sphenoid bone are the slits between the lesser and greater wings. I believe you can see the one on the left there quite well. Well, there's the one on the right. Actually, looks better, doesn't it? From the anterior aspect at the superior orbital fissure, and you see that little hole just above. That's the optic foramen we saw a moment ago. If you think about how complex the eye is, you can appreciate why there would be so many nerves associated with the eye. Again, you see uh, right here the little hole optic foramen, passageway for the optic nerve as well as the ophthalmic artery, and then the slit right here, the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is the passageway for the oculomotor nerve, that's cranial nerve number three, the trochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number four, the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, now the trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve number five, and it has three branches, trigeminal, has an ophthalmic branch, a mandibular branch, and a maxillary branch, but it's the ophthalmic branch that is one of four nerves passing through the superior orbital fissure. The abducens nerve, or cranial nerve number six, is the fourth nerve to pass through the superior orbital fissure. Or disarticulated sphenoid bone, now this is an anterior view. You can see the superior orbital fissure there indicated with a purple pipe cleaner and you can see the right side, which is your left as you look at the screen, that is uh, not indicated with a pipe cleaner. Now we're looking at the foramen rotundum from inside the cranial vault. I'm indicating the foramen rotundum with a pink pipe cleaner. Here in the disarticulated sphenoid bone, I'm indicating the foramen rotundum with a purple pipe cleaner. This is the other foramen rotundum, the foramen rotundum on the right. Foramen rotundum is the passageway for the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. Next is the foramen ovale, indicated with the pink pipe cleaner in the articulated skull. 
and the purple pipe cleaner and the disarticulated skull. Let's try to put some of this together now. And we've got the foramen ovale indicated here with the purple pipe cleaner. This is the foramen rotundum. Again, rotundum is the passageway for the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. Ovale is the passageway for the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. Also, we have this small hole, the foramen spinosum, which is the passageway for the meningeal vessels. And our skull, this is the foramen rotundum, this is the foramen ovale, this is the foramen spinosum. Next we have the foramen lacerum, which is right here. A lacerum is the passageway for the pharyngeal artery as well as the internal carotid artery. Now that's confusing because we've already said that the internal carotid artery passes through the carotid canal, and it does. But the carotid canal sort of bisects the frame and lacerum. Let me try to indicate all of that with pipe cleaners. Okay, now the frame and lacerum, I'll show it to you on the right first of all, is right there. Now on the left, you see a purple pipe cleaner and a pink pipe cleaner. One representing the internal carotid artery, that would be the pink one, and the uh, purple one representing the pharyngeal artery. And it looks like that they both come through the same hole. But when we turn the skull over and we look from the bottom, we can see that they are clearly two separate holes, two separate openings. So the purple pipe cleaner, the pharyngeal artery, goes straight through lacerum, while the pink pipe cleaner, the internal carotid artery, goes through the carotid canal, which travels this distance horizontally and then bisects the frame and lacerum. These are the tergoid processes of the sphenoid bone divided into lateral and medial plates. Again, lateral and medial plates. Exactly what we'd have to do to find those tergoid processes on the disarticulated bone. So there's our bird with the wings and the feet. Well, the wings are the tergoid processes. This is an anterior view of the disarticulated bone. Lateral, medial plate. Medial, lateral plate. I turn the bone around, again, the tergoid processes. The sphenoid sinus is within the body. Remember that the body is the part of the bone that the wings and the feet are attached to. Well, you can see openings into the sinuses here and here. Just remember, though, the body is hollow. Also remember that the superior aspect of the body is the cella tersica. Our next bone is the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone sits right here. This specifically is the crystagalli of the ethmoid bone. And our disarticulated bone, this is the crystagalli of the ethmoid bone. The cribriform plate is this flat portion with all the little holes in it. And the little holes are called the cribriform foramen. So the cribriform plate would be this area in here. So crystagalli, cribriform plate. The crystagalli helps anchor the dura mater, which is one component of the meninges surrounding the brain and spinal cord. The cribriform plate provides the tiny holes called the cribriform foramen, which are passageways from the, for the olfactory nerves. 